welcome again to International Soccer Break, the American Soccer Break edition. I have Rahi and I have Ishana. And we're coming to you after a few days because we all needed a few days after that performance by the U.S. women's team, which is ranked number one in the world and the best team in the history of women's soccer. And we ended up with something slightly different. <laughs> Sean, did you get that bucket hat? It's cool, but did you get it to hide your emotions? Is that is that the idea? Or, or I mean, is... to be honest, I got it because I, I ordered it. And when I was watching that game, it only arrived yesterday. And I was afraid I might not even be able to wear it. And like that, it was like that scary. I was like, oh, great. There's a bucket hat going to waste. Um, it's a special collaboration that they're doing um, with the women's team. But I think we need to collaborate a little bit more on the field rather than <laughs> off. Well, I, but hey, yeah. the, 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 we should <laughs> collaborate with the post at least. That was our, 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 our player of the match. Yes, yes. As Carly Lloyd has made it clear. <laughs> so let's talk about the game, I guess. Uh, uh, what we went wrong? Uh, not, I don't want everything because we'll be here for like three weeks. But like, you know, give me the biggest thing for each of you that went wrong. Okay, so for me, it's two things. And I, I don't want to, you know, rag on the team too much. I think they've they've gotten plenty of that. But um, there's two issues. One is Vlatko. Like, he does not know what he's doing. He made poor tactical choices. The biggest issue is we have no chemistry on the field. Okay, fine. You know, he starts Lynn Williams. All right, let's try something different. Sure. I didn't agree with that. If you remember from last last week. I was saying that I think he is trying to not sub out, you know, Rodman, Morgan, Sophia Smith, having that, you know, chemistry build. However, he started with someone new, whatever. Clearly, it's not working. Okay, second half rolls around. He doesn't sub her out. Okay, 70th minute. She's still not subbed out. He brings in Trini Rodman towards like the 80th minute. It made absolutely no sense. I mean... It was just, he just did not have a plan at all. So that was one issue. The second issue is, I think, as much as it's fun to watch the U.S. play, always driving forward, always driving through the middle, trying to kind of like juke people out one-on-one, -on -one, they need to tone it down a little bit and play a little bit more horizontally. If you watch England, if you watch Spain, if you watch... um even the Netherlands to an extent, you know, these yep. European style of play, if you're able to pass and connect your passes on your side of the field, it, it slows down the pace of the game and you show control and confidence. And then you can, you know, make these nice flicks that Alex Morgan is making, you know, really understand where everyone else is on the pitch. These girls just did not know where the other one was. They were bunching up. It was like high school soccer problems. It was... It was astonishing, honestly. Yeah, it was astonishing. And, and, and look, I, I know they've been ragged on a lot, but this was the worst U.S. women's performance I've ever seen. Probably the worst U.S. women's performance in a World Cup in the history of this program. It, I mean, we, we should have lost this game. I mean, effectively, yeah. that moment off the post, the game should be lost. We should be and, out of the World Cup. If it wasn't for the out post. of the World Cup. Yeah. Out of the World yeah. Cup. I mean, that, yeah, and, that, and and that's it. And 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 the, the issues are many, but the main issue, to your point, Ashana, is a lack of cohesion. This team doesn't move together. And and, and I think coming this tournament, we thought they're going to figure it out. A lot of injuries. The players are on the field together for the first time. They'll figure it out. They'll figure it out. They'll figure it out. They haven't figured it out, and they're still searching for answers. And the biggest problem is in the midfield, where they press not together. So there's so much space in the midfield you see for the opponent to expose. And then they're constantly playing direct and forward. And the problem that does is it becomes very easy from a defensive standpoint because you understand which direction they're coming. There's never playing that switch ever. The amount of time this Crystal Dunn is available for that switch back to the left or vice versa, they're never playing that ball. There's just no understanding. There's no plan. There's no decisive. This is the way we're going to attack this team. It's... We're going to, every time we get the ball, we're going directly forward. And, 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 and to, to add to that, it's not like you're past playing it forward to feet or playing it forward into actual space. You're just playing it forward aimlessly. 
Well, that's the thing. I, I think it felt like kickball a little bit. Yeah, like, exactly. And you're also the weird thing is it's okay, fine. If you want to be fancy, be fancy. You know, we see, we're seeing more back heels, things like that in this women's tournament. But then if you do that, you have to be really clinical with the shot. You have to be able to score. And like something is happening. Like Alex Morgan, she's not being able to score. You know, Lynn Williams missed that one. That like if you want to do that, then and if you want to take these shots, you got to be clinical with them. There's one player who's played well, in my opinion, that's Naomi Germa. 100%. And that's the only player on this team that's played yes. well and looked like an elite player. And Nobody else. Yeah. And consistently, I would say. I, I think some other yeah. players have played okay here and there, but she's consistently solid. Yeah, and I think that was lost in that game. I think a lot of people, like, you know, blamed the entire team, but she actually had a phenomenal performance. And I thought, as a whole, the defense was 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 decent in that game. I, I, you I know, agree. I they all played a decent game. But, okay, moving, moving forward. Um, we talked about the midfield uh, a little bit, where I've seen that that's the problem, playing against Sweden. I had a very radical solution, which Vladko is never going to listen to. Uh, and yeah. <laughs> And so, but I'll say it anyway to viewers out there who are interested. You know what I've seen is I think Alex Morgan should actually come into like a more reserved uh, position behind the two other strikers. So what I would do is play more of 4-3-1-2 where you have Alex Morgan kind of play like Wayne Rooney kind of did toward the end of his career when he wasn't able to be like a striker. And he was, he kind of played in a more reserved role where he was setting up the strikers. So then you could have Rodman and Sophia Smith up front. I agree. I mean, I, I think, especially since she's just struggling with being able to score, I, I, I think her uh, strength in this tournament has been being able to place the ball nicely for other players. And she has a good sense. I think that comes from veteran experience. She has a good sense of the pitch, of the field. And I think that would be a good solution. And, like, he loves to experiment. So. You know, like, but, but Trinity Rodman has to start. I mean, and none of this, yeah. I mean, I, that was insane to me that she didn't start. And then you bring her on with 10 minutes left. And his first sub was Megan Rapino, which made no sense. That's zero sense. Who, who completely slowed down the play, not the time to bring her in. Every attack down the left, she'd slow down that play, br bring the ball back. Her passes were off. When you had before you, you had Sophia Smith on who could take players on directly and push forward. I didn't understand the move at all. And, and honestly, I think we have to accept that we just don't have an elite coach. And that's the reality. And we have okay. to accept that. Yeah. So but we have to play Sweden and we have to win in the knockout phase. So so how do we go about doing that? Um, how well, do we do that? You yeah. know, I, I was watching Sweden. And the one thing I will say is that Sweden-Argentina uh, is that they play a little bit similarly to us. So... I think that could be an advantage. They do leave a lot of space, uh, especially there's gaps in the midfield and um, they make a lot of mistakes that we do. They, you know, they, they're losing the ball a lot, or at least they were in this, in this past game. So um, I think if we slow down the pace a bit, like I was saying, uh, I think we need to just get on the field and practice connecting passes, like really basic, simplify, don't try to beat everyone, make one less touch. Everyone, it kind of feels like the players are being, I, I don't want to say that they're being selfish, but it looks as though they're playing a little selfishly. Like they, they need to pass quicker. They need to just, you know, everybody's just like getting frustrated and wanting to score, you know, make some nice assists, slow it down and act like you're walking on to this game being like, we have won four times. We are world champions. We are ranked number one. and you know, come in with some footing. Yeah, trust your teammates. And, and that's not happening at all. Absolutely. But I, I think, actually, I, I agree that this Sweden team has been very clinical from set pieces. So that's a big danger. We need to defend set pieces very well. But I don't mind playing this team at pace, playing them quickly. And what I mean is pressing this team, but pressing collectively. So what I'd like to see is I'd like to see us actually play a, a higher press. Because I've seen that Naomi Gurma on the back end, it does a very good job positioning herself and has been and has been able to win those balls. So really hound their midfield and play a bit of a higher higher press so that we don't allow for so much space. The problem right now is one person's pressing Lavelle and then Lindsey Horan is way behind and there's a huge space. And, and Andy Saltman is, is, is nowhere to be found. So I'd like to see us actually 
except that this game is going to be a bit of a back and forth, helter skelter kind of game. And it's a game then that we can win if we play it that way. So I would actually, I, my, my suggestion is press often, early, and high. Okay. So let's finish with this now. Obviously, huge game, U.S. against Sweden. That's going to be Saturday, super late night in the West Coast and, and very early East Coast. But, um, <laughs> yeah, too early. But never mind. Well, everyone needs to watch. Um, I know. People let's are slacking. Finish. People are <laughs> we had slacking. We wouldn't have had that game. Yeah, 100% we I wouldn't know. have had that game. We wouldn't have that issue. Carly Lloyd, obviously, a, you know, former uh, U.S. national team player made some very harsh comments about the team and somewhere in there came out the concept that the mentality is an issue with this U.S. women's national team. Um, some other former players, Christian Press, came out and said, you know, that it, it's not that issue. So that's our onside offside topic of the day today. Mentality, is it the problem with this U.S. women's national team? I'm going to go offside. I, I I do think there are some issues um i in the sense of you know she, she called them arrogant i would not agree with that i wouldn't use that word but i i do think there is a bit of confusion and you know they're really pushing the marketing off the field and we don't really know what's happening on the field so in that sense maybe there's like not a super a kernel of leadership but i don't think that's the issue with the players i think that's coming from the top specifically the coaches and vladko like if you know it's if i'm an actor if you don't trust your director who's captioning things then you you lose confidence in yourself you know you need someone to kind of put their foot down something kristen press said that was really valuable though is she was saying you know obviously carly lloyd was being reactionary tobin heath was saying this as well and you do need those players to kind of, you know, yell a little bit and put people in check, but then you also need the positivity. You need both of that and it needs to blend and it needs to be seamless. And that is sort of, I think the issue, but I, I don't think, yeah, I'm offside. I, I, I like, there's no way any of these players came on and were like lackluster about, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. I, look, I, but to your point, who's doing the yelling? And and, and the, the images after the game were worrying, right? Because you just played a really, really bad game against a team that you should beat. And it seemed like they were accepting of the fact that, yes, they made out of the group rather than being really angry about the fact that they had a terrible performance. Now, that's just what we're seeing, right? We didn't right. see that during the game. We didn't see the anger. We didn't see those. And it could just be a different attitude, a different approach, a new generation that doesn't outwardly display in that way more positive. I'm fine with that. The reason I'm going offside as well here, Shana, is because I do agree mentality is part of the problem, but it's not the problem because they're symbiotic. Mentality and tactics or mentality and strategy go hand in hand, right? If you know your role, if you know what you're supposed to do, you're confident in what your teammates are doing, then the mentality shows as well. You become positive, you become together and cohesive. And the problem right now is there's no clarity on what my role is from the players. There's no clarity on what the plan is. So the mentality suffers as a result. It's very hard when there's confusion everywhere. And the problem is this team is just trying to figure things out and they haven't yet found a solution. And you saw in that second half against Netherlands for a period, suddenly the mentality looked good, right? Lindsay Ryan got angry. They scored a goal. Mm -hmm. Things started working. Then it's like the mentality was there. So the mentality feeds off knowing your roles knowing your responsibility, knowing the plan as a team. And right now, none of those things are clear. And it's not going to come from the coach. For that reason, I'm, I'm off sides on this one. Yeah, you know, one thing I want to quickly add to, a lot of people have said, oh, you know, this, is, it's, this isn't us playing badly. This is not us, you know, like losing our, our reign. It's that the other teams internationally are catching up. That is true, but that is an independent issue. They are catching up. There is more competition. But despite that, we played like trash. <laughs> there is just no, no, no... I mean, I would love to see us play to our potential and also have this healthy competition. You know, that's... And I don't think that we're unaware as a team that that's happening and that this was not the problem that Portugal... They played a great game, but they weren't out competing us because of... They're out competing us because of 
unforced errors, errors of our own making. Yeah, and look, I I I completely agree with you. I I think you guys are both offside. I am also offside because, frankly, I think it wasn't the mentality that actually lost this, uh, not lost, but it felt like a loss this this game. But I think it's a play on the field in the midfield that needs to get it done, and that's going to be the situation come Saturday, USA versus Sweden. We got to get it done now. Better performance. We're all expecting a better performance. Hope they get it done. Go USA. Go U.S. Women's National Team. You know, now's your time to shine. Beat Sweden and make it on to the quarterfinals. Go USA. Still alive. Group stage is history.